What is going on everyone? Phil here and welcome to my official review on DSP Reacts for The Last of Us Television Series Episode 8. And if you're taking a look at the picture, I think you know, ladies and gentlemen, finally it's time. Oh yeah, it's Troy Baker week. So finally, we get to make all kinds of jokes about him wearing scarves. He's not wearing a scarf. It's winter outside in the episode, and now Troy Baker decides not to wear a scarf? Well, the hell with this stupid name. Ruined the joke. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I really like this episode, okay? Like, seriously. if Of all the episodes so far in, in the series, I actually feel like this one, they were really, really, really trying to keep this episode accurate to the game. Now, you might say, well, how can you do that? Video game versus TV series, what about all the gameplay? Well, that's pretty much exactly right. They cut out all the gameplay. Um, this is the story of how Ellie, who is desperately trying to save the life of Joel, who was stabbed brutally uh, a couple of episodes ago and is dying from an infection, uh, how she's basically trying to find resources to cure that infection. And so she's heading out to hunt. She realizes there's no good food. She has to find food for Joel. She starts to use the hunting skills Joel taught her with the hunting rifle. She ends up shooting a deer. She's trying to track it down because it ran away, but it is bleeding out. And come to find out, it's actually David and, and I believe his name is James. These two characters who she encounters. Now, David and James are from a settlement that we didn't know about up until this point. But apparently this settlement is exactly the same settlement where the people who had ran into Joel and Ellie came from back at the university. So if you remember that encounter, Joel and Ellie were trying to escape. Sadly, they didn't get away scot-free because one of those people saw Joel. They got into a fight, and that's how Joel got stabbed, but Joel actually did kill that person. Well, guess what? That person was a father. That father was beloved by this community that David actually leads. And so the whole community basically wants blood for that kill. They want Joel to come to justice for murdering their community member. David is a charismatic leader of this community and he uses religion as essentially a way to quell the masses, meaning reading passages from the Bible and or using religious teachings as a preacher in order to basically maintain control. What's interesting about this episode is that during the course of the episode you find out it's all a ruse. We'll talk a little bit about that later. James is his right-hand man. Although it's interesting because over the course of the episode, Troy Baker, who plays this character, reveals he's not exactly 100% sure that David is the best leader. He even questions his judgments. He basically becomes kind of like the devil's advocate character of the episode, which is actually very interesting and nicely played. If I remember correctly, there were characters like this in the original game who kind of played off of David, but I don't know if it was always the same person. Like Troy Baker playing the character of James actually fills the role well, and I actually feel like that's something maybe even better than the game, the way that it's portrayed, okay? So, quick synopsis of the episode. If you played the game, you'll know the story. Basically, Ellie runs into David, and now James, while she is trying to hunt this deer. Well, they want the meat because their settlement is starving, so they crack a deal. They're going to trade some of this venison meat for penicillin so that Ellie can go save Joel. However, David pretty much figures out very quickly she's the girl who was with Joel, and of course they're all out to find Joel because he killed one of their community members. So even though he's acting all friendly, in reality his plan is to finally track them down and find out where that they're, they're hiding and to kill Joel. So, to make a long story short, the penicillin swap happens, Ellie goes, heals Joel up, and prepares him because she knows that possibly something could be going wrong, so she's injecting him with his penicillin, waiting a day or two, trying to heal him up. And, of course, what ends up happening is that David and James and a group of searchers track down Ellie from basically finding her trail and end up in the community where Joel and Ellie are hiding. So now Ellie has to desperately protect Joel. So what does she decide to do? Well, I'll give Joel a knife, I'll wake him up, and tell him, listen, I know you're still dying, you're in a bad way here, but... You gotta defend yourself. I gotta go try to draw them away. And she does. She jumps on a horse. This is all basically from the game. Almost shot by shot, frame by frame. Very close to how the game pan panned out. So, basically she takes off and, uh, you know, they take her out. Meaning they take out the horse. And then they capture Ellie. Uh, they try to find Joel. Joel wakes up. And this is when it gets very, very brutal. Joel starts viciously killing them. Um, 
probably the most brutal way you've ever seen Joel in the entire series at this point. First, even though he's very weak, he murders someone with a knife by impaling them in the neck, and basically until they bleed out. Um, then they take Ellie. So Ellie's gone, and now Joel is incensed uh, that they have taken Ellie, and other survivors are being sent back, or other searchers, excuse me, from the community are being sent back to look for Joel, and he's systematically capturing them, torturing them, and taking them out one by one to find out where they're holding Ellie, okay? Um, all this is pretty much according to the game, except for something critical that's completely missing here. The whole gameplay element. In the game, when Ellie first runs into David, okay, there is this interesting uh, scenario where they have to defend themselves against hordes of the the turned, hordes of these cordyceps zombies. And they're inside this cabin, and they're fending off every window. It's actually one of the hardest and most scary parts of the game, which is just the two of them going at it, and David's tossing her ammo and stuff so she can use her rifle to take out these zombies as they're coming in. He's fighting them off too, and it's basically like this gauntlet survival. It's kind of how David and Ellie kind of almost have a camaraderie and start to trust each other, okay? That never happens in the show. So, there is a little missing, and it does feel a little bit rushed in that regard, but honestly, without having that gameplay segment in there, it still felt good to me. So, missing gameplay, yes, but overall, the same plot elements are retained. Now, continuing on, again, with the plot and the plot of the game, uh, basically, what ends up happening is Joel tracks down the camp of where these people are living and tries to infiltrate it to save Ellie. In the meantime, we flash to Ellie. Ellie is locked up in a cage, and she's basically being interrogated by David. And come to find out, number one, a big mystery of these people is that they're cannibals. They've been eating their own in order to stay alive because they hadn't have enough food. It's been too cold. They couldn't hunt. They couldn't grow anything in the ground. It was their only way to survive, and they've been eating people for ages, and no one even really knew, although it sounds like the townspeople kind of suspected. Also, there is a scene where we find out that David isn't necessarily the benevolent leader. He actually mistreats his survivors by kind of slapping them around, beating them up, and he kind of has an iron fist with the way that he rules the colony. So it's not necessarily that, that he's the leader because they all love him, okay? Um, so he has a conversation with Ellie, and again, very reminiscent of the conversation in the game where essentially he says that he respects her because unlike everyone else in his colony who he feels is a sheep, he says, I actually am not who I say I am. He kind of reveals he doesn't believe in any of the religion that he uses to keep them under his thumb. That That's just the method he uses in order to have them believe him and control them. And in fact, he says he's actually has a violent, he's a very violent person, just like Ellie. That he feels she's very violent, that's why she attacked his people, and that he's violent too. And then a very weird scene that's, yes, it's pretty much taken directly out of the game. It's kind of revealed that this guy is a pedophile. He likes Ellie and wants to basically rule with her over the colony. He even says that they could be together, and together they could expand the colony and all of that. It's pretty darned creepy. Um, it pretty much goes down exactly like the game. Ellie attacks him. Uh, it doesn't go too well, so now they're going to kill Ellie. Ellie ends up breaking free. In one change from the game, Ellie kills James, because James comes into the room to help David, but there's a cleaver, and she grabs the cleaver and zoop, gets it right in the neck, and that's the end of James. And then there's the scene where they run out into the lodge, and the lodge is... is one thing I distinctly noticed that was different, in the game, I believe the scene takes place at night. For whatever, for shooting reasons, the lodge scene took place during the day because it's very sunny outside. I noticed the light coming through the windows. But it's essentially the same. David is creepy. He's tracking her down. He's saying, you know, I'm going to have my way with you or whatever. You know, too bad. You know, he's going he's to try to get her. And, you know, it's disgusting, basically. It's really gross. And there's this... And unlike the game where you're sneaking around and trying to get behind him and stab him from behind in this case she's just hiding for a bit and then eventually he finds her she stabs him uh he's bleeding out but now he's pissed he throws her to the ground he's gonna have his way with her but then she grabs the the is the meat cleaver and gets him and then yes just like the game she continuously bludgeons and chops him up it's disgusting as hell there's blood everywhere they don't show him but they do show the blood squirting everywhere very gory um one difference that I noticed, I believe in the game, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, I think Joel goes into the lodge and finds her doing this and stops her. And then they have this heartfelt scene where it's like father and daughter united. He sees how crazy this was, what she just went through. And then they escape. Um, I believe in here, she runs out of the lodge and then Joel's outside. So in this case, Joel never sees what she's done. 
I don't know if that has any indication on what's going to happen in the last episode next week. It's weird they kind of change that scenario because I'm not sure exactly what it changes, but it definitely went down differently than it did in the game. So, if you've played The Last of Us 1 and you're listening to this review and you're like, well, that all sounds pretty accurate to the game. You're right. This episode is one of the most accurate plot-wise to the game. The only real things they changed were a few little miter tweaks to the plot here or there, such as Troy Baker being a distinct character, and also no gameplay elements, you know, no no working together to survive between David and Ellie, um, which may make it sound a little weird because really you might think that the reason David really liked Ellie in the game is because they did survive and he started to respect her as a survivor who's a brutal killer like he is as well. While he feels no one in his colony is like that, they're all sheep. He calls them literally sheep. And he thinks, well, Ellie's not a sheep. That's why I'm so attracted to her, right? Um, so that's a little different, okay? But for the most part, it's almost dead on accurate to the show. There's even some little touches I really enjoyed in this episode. For example, take a look at the actors. First of all, in the game, David looks a little bit more malevolent. Like, he's got a longer face. He almost looks kind of dirty to the point where it's hard to trust him. Now, he's charismatic in the game. He's actually played by voice actor Nolan North, I believe, who, of course, is a great voice actor, does a great job in the game. And so that's kind of what woos you over. Even though he doesn't look like the most trustworthy person, the first time they meet and they're fighting the zombies together, you know, that's kind of an, a, a way to say, okay, you could trust this guy. Then, of course, you can't. So it's like surprise, right? In the show, take a look at him. He looks very different. In fact, he looks like a kind preacher type. So it kind of completes the whole idea of the wolf in sheep's clothing idea of how David is supposed to be portrayed. Um, Troy Baker's character, all right, a new addition and a welcome addition. He did a good job acting and, you know, it was a minor role, but it was still a pretty good role. But take a look at all three of them in this scene, right? Or not this scene, but this picture. You notice something? They're all showing signs of being an extreme cold. Ellie's face, Troy's face, right? Bright pink. I liked that because I have seen shows where people are outside in the snow. It's supposed to be freezing cold. The whole plot is that they can't get food. They can't grow anything. It's so cold out there, right? But then you'll be, oh, the actor looks fine. Looks like they just got out of the makeup trailer and they're running through the snow and they're like, no problem. They really went out of their way with the shooting and the way that they made the, the actors look to make it portray that they were really out there in those elements. I really liked that about it, okay? So overall, the episode was well-paced. The episode really didn't leave out any of the major plot points of the David storyline in the game. It got the message across of what was happening. It advanced the plot in a great way. It got Joel back on his feet, healed, and ready to go again. And it showed that Ellie is a survivor in her own right and went through a traumatic experience, which is all exactly what they were getting at in the, sh in the game. So that's great. The gameplay elements missing here, did they necessarily really change the plot that much? No. I think the one major difference here, again, is that Ellie and David never had that camaraderie moment where they kind of worked together to survive the zombies, and that's why she kind of trusted him at first. But also, there is a distinct b bunch of gameplay, if I remember, missing. Joel infiltrates the colony looking for Ellie, and he ends up killing a ton of the colonists, right? I'm almost positive he goes in there, and he just indiscriminately is killing them, which is brutal because you think these are just normal people who are, who are underneath David. They're not necessarily bad people. Maybe they're just being misguided by David. Joel doesn't give a shit. He's just zoop killing them all. He kills tons of them in the game, if I remember correctly, to get to Ellie. That is missing from this episode, although you do see him torture and kill the two people in the town that were looking for him, and then he gets his information from them by interrogating them, and then he goes and finds Ellie. You don't necessarily see him really become this ultimate cold-blooded killer that you do see him be in the games. So, if anything, the missing gameplay elements in this series are making you lose the emphasis of that Joel really is a bad, a bad person. Excuse me. A bad person. Um outside of the fact that he's becoming a father figure to Ellie. In the games, that's very much portrayed well. In this series, not as much, in my opinion, because really, they cut out so much gameplay. In fact, there is not a single infected in this episode. Not one. And, yeah, that could be said. That's a detriment. This is supposed to be a show about, you know, what would happen in a cordyceps zombie apocalypse, and there's been many episodes in the show with either only one infected or none whatsoever. That could be a problem. I, you know, listen, the whole David plotline was good, but if there was cordyceps zombies in it, 
there were none in the show. I almost have to say, I wonder, the reasoning maybe that they have so many zombies is budgeting. Did they have a limited budget that they could use to film this show and they wanted to really film all the key aspects of it and figured the zombies were the thing they could skimp on? Because, man, I mean, I'll be honest, you know, here we are. The last episode is next week. Now, for those who have followed along the game, here's what happens between the David plotline and the end of the game. This is the game summary. They end up going through a major city. They actually see the remnants of what used to be the city. I think there's like a zoo, and now you see the giraffes walking through the city. But then they realize they have to get through the city and survive, and that means they have to go through humans. That means they have to go through infected. In fact, there's one giant gauntlet segment where they have to get through this infected tunnel way that is absolutely full of the Cordyceps monsters, including bloaters and everything else, and they have to get through. And it's actually one of the hardest gameplay segments of the game, and it's scary, and it's awesome because after that, you're basically in the home stretch. Now, you're at the hospital. There's the plot line between the Fireflies and Ellie and Joel, and it's the big finale. So... They've got, like, a, from what I don't understand, a 45-minute episode next week. What are they going to do with it? I wonder. Will they add in things? Because, you know, Joel didn't see Ellie kill uh, David. Will that be part of the plot? Well, you know what I mean? Like, I'm curious what they're going to change and how this is going to pan out for the finale. Um, because we haven't really seen many Cordyceps zombies, nor have we really seen them have to fight many to survive. It's just like they just ignore them or avoid them altogether they never really have to fight them at all, while in the game, that's the major part of the game. So, even though I like Episode 8, and I'll be honest, I actually think this is the best episode so far of the entire season. I really feel Episode 8's the strongest one. It's great character development, it's gruesome, but at the same time, it shows how dangerous humans can be in this, uh, you know, apocalyptic world. They could seem one way, and then they end up being completely another. Um, it shows how brutal, you know, everyone is to survive. Uh, and the only thing that's missing is zombies. If there were zombies in it, I'd probably like it even more. But with none of the zombies, it's a little bit of a letdown. But at the most part, it's accurate to the game. I really liked it. My favorite episode so far. Seriously. Um, but it definitely loses a few points because Troy Baker's not wearing a scarf. I mean, it's the absolute opportunity for him to be wearing it, and he's not. It's absolutely ridiculous they didn't have that. I kid. Um, all right. So episode eight, my favorite episode. Next week, the finale. How will the finale pan out? I don't know, and I don't know how I'm going to like it or not. I wonder what they're going to change, what they're not. I really have no idea how they're going to tackle this thing. So I hope you enjoyed this episode. Thanks for watching. By all means, please leave comments. Share your thoughts. Let me know what you think. If you agree, you disagree with me on this episode. Um, and, of course, if you like this series, please leave comments and like the video. I will see you next week for the finale of The Last of Us, everyone. Thanks for watching all along. I'll see you then.